fresh and interesting and start a vlog in the car. You guys know how much I love my little car updates. So I figure I'm here, I'm available. Let's start a vlog because I'm in a vlogging mood. I'm in a let's share everything about my life mood. Maybe that's not great for you, but it's great for me. <laughs> so I wanted to come together, sit down, talk about this vlog, share a little bit about my plans for the remainder of the week. It is Tuesday, so I'm starting this a little bit late, but yesterday, the first of the month, I was focusing on books that weren't actually on my TBR. Actually, that's a lie. One of them was, and I'll talk about it. Um, but I was trying to finish up some of the things that I had current, I was currently in the middle of um, from March, and now I'm actually getting started on my April TBR in full force. I am going to be re reading one more book that I was supposed to read last month, but I have a meeting with my friend on Friday so I was able to like, kind of push my plans a little bit for reading but I'm just excited to chat with you guys talk all about books and share with you guys my reading plans for the remainder of the week so let's talk about the book that I'm currently in the middle of and then we'll move on to my plans for the rest of the week I'm currently in the middle of forget me not by Julie Soto and I'm already loving it and I'm only 27 pages in I like the writing I really like the way this author is putting like the words on the page everything about like her cadence and the way that she is um, phrasing lines is just working for me her prose is working for me and I'm excited however um, I think I'm gonna be even more excited because this is about to get into enemies to lovers second chance romance territory and I am here for it I'm about to eat this shit up I'm literally so freaking pumped so hopefully I love it as much as everyone else says that they love it because I've heard nothing but good things, but I'm excited to get this one read. Plus, it'll be a sub box off of my list. This is an Afterlight exclu exclusive edition. Uh, when I was subscribed to Afterlight, I am no longer subscribed to them, but I do love their editions. They're beautiful. I just wasn't picking them up because I don't read a lot of trad published romances. But besides the point, this one follows names. Don't know them. Um... Ama Torres. She's a wedding planner. She has loved weddings for as long as she can remember, but mostly because her mother has been married 16 times and she's been around uh, weddings for a, excuse me, mind your business over there. Be quiet. Thank you. Uh, she's been around weddings so many times because 16 weddings is a lot of weddings, okay? Um, and then she ends up having to do this, like, not half, have to. She decides to take part in this very large scale wedding that will put her business on the map. The only downside is she has to work with her ex boyfriend that she was very much in love with and had a very large falling out from but he is the florist that is currently tasked with this wedding as well and they are forced to work together and it's going to be like a forced proximity second chance enemies to lovers romance and literally when i tell you i'm excited i'm chomping at the bit to read more of this book so i'm gonna pop in the audiobook on my way to go get lunch and on my way to pick up my son and when i get home and i'm just i'm literally so excited about it uh i cannot wait to read this one i know i can already have i have a feeling you know when you pick up a book and you read those first couple pages and you just know it's gonna be a five star Woo! okay that's that i need to hurry this up because it's hot in here and i don't turn on my car for car updates for mo most of the time because it it's loud. Anyways, besides the point, uh, I plan on reading several books, but let's talk about the book that I picked up yesterday and Dina. <laughs> That's Dirty Dom by Willow Winter. This is my second time reading a book by this author. The first book I read and finished and gave it three stars. I didn't love it. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. This one, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It's short. It was only 200 pages and I got 50 pages in and I was like, please, God, save me. Save me from the torment and the torture because I couldn't do it. The writing was awful. The plot was awful. The sex scenes were so cringy. I wanted to die and uh, it just wasn't good. It wasn't good. I think the moment when I was like, okay, I gotta go. He was texting her outside of her house for which she had already asked him to leave because she has a kid and she didn't want him to be around his kid because she literally met him on the day when she was paying her dead husband's like debt that he, that she needed to pay for him. And they blinked and he was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with her. I need her okay um fine sir but then he's like basically stalking her and she was like you need to go my son's coming over late please get get out of here and he ends up showing back up and like as a ruse to protect her because she might have been danger she's not or she isn't at the time that i was reading it but then um he proceeded to like text her and he was like let me in i want to fuck now and i was like i yeah, i just can't i just i couldn't do it so i did enough that i didn't read it i think i i just no, 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 no. Anyways, my plans for the rest of the week. I plan on reading The Seven Year Slip. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is one of Karina's favorite books, and I have been wanting to pick it up for a while, just haven't had a chance to put it on a TBR. And I'm excited to read it. I am reading this with a friend. Um, she reached out to me and she was like, I want to read a book. Will you read it with me and we can chat? And I was like, Yes, please. I need more reader people in my life. So we've talked about books for a while, but this is the first time we're going to read one together. And I'm going to her house on Friday to have a charcuterie board and wine, and we're going to chill, and I'm going to have like a non like mom related day.
So I'm literally so excited about that, but I have to read the book first. So I'm going to start that tonight. I have reading spent with Mike at 7.30, so I'm going to read that. And then my other priorities for the rest of the month, I'm honestly just taking it as it comes. I don't really know what I want to read. I don't know what I'm in the mood for, but I do know that I want to fi finish my, like, initial tbr before moving into my tbr bingo books because i want to read those at the end of the month so i have those books to choose from i think maybe i will pick up the next book in the lost and found series by chris what's her name Catherine cows and pick up glimmers of you because those ones are quick and easy and i love 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 that series so that's probably going to be the next book that i pick up after i finish the seven year slip and what is this nah forget me not I'm looking at the cover and I couldn't remember the name. Anyways, I gotta go. I think I'm just dying of heat stroke right now. That's why my brain is not comp comprehending anything. I gotta go. I'm sweaty. Uh, happy vlog. Bye. <laughs>aspect in how creative these two characters are and how well they play off of each other and how well they fit together even when they're not really talking to each other when they're just kind of talking around each other and existing in the same orbit but something about the way that these characters interact on the page and the uh chemistry that they have together is just so undeniable that i am the only thing that i have a gripe with is that there are two um perspectives in here however we're only getting the male perspective in the past and i really 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 am craving his a perspective in the present i want to see how he's reacting to everything having to be back in each other's lives and how things are affecting him in that way and we're just not getting that from his perspective just yet so i'm hoping that will change but we are getting a past and present timeline of how their relationship first came to be how they became you know where they are now why they hate each other so much why they have so much disdain for each other and eventually you know they're going to have a rekindled connection but overall i'm just really enjoying it i really like the female female relationship that is in here and the overall like wedding spring aspect of this book is just everything that i could have wanted at the start of spring so my thoughts are really really positive about that book it's feeling like it's going to be a five star read and i'm really excited about it but we'll just have to see how the perspectives play out and that will really determine whether or not this is a five star read for me so overall really good this margarita that my father-in-law made me is incredible so i'm going to drink this lay down for 15 to 20 minutes and then get back to my family so i will check in with you guys in a little bit
third when wednesday wednesday great happy wednesday i wanted to come on here and share with you guys some updates on my reading since yesterday um surprisingly i did pretty good i don't know why i'm saying surprisingly i i mean i read this amount of books most of the time but i just feel like it's a great start to the month of april and i'm getting off on the right foot and i'm reading some really great books so i want to talk about it um first and foremost uh, one that i didn't talk to you guys about picking up in my um start of the video is freestyle by b page this is my stuff your candle today spinner wheel pick and i'm just slowly making my way through this i started it last month and got about 30 percent of the way through and i'm just trying to make like slow progress on this taking out little chunks every time i pick it up with the hopes that i'll finish it sometime soon i don't really know but i did get to page let's see 138 of i don't even know i think it's like 300 plus pages and I'm 40% of the way through. Really enjoying it. This is a um, Why Choose dance romance set in the UK. I'm almost positive. And these characters were best friends growing up. They formed a dance crew. They were really, really close. Something very large broke them apart. And now they hate each other. It's years later and they all end up at the same dance school. But they have such intense hate for each other that there's a lot of tension. And there's also a matter of like life and death because there are some gang ties and mob ties. So it's really interesting so far. I really like the writing. I'm really intrigued by the character, uh, the characterization of these five characters and where the tension that is currently building is going to go. I mean, we all know where it's going to go, but I'm really curious to see what broke them up, what caused the end of their friendship, what caused such vehement hate to each other, and how they're going to take themselves back. This is a five book series. It's quite a long time that before I, I think the characters finally get together. It might be one of a more slow burn um, why choose romances, but I am excited for it. And I'm curious to see what I'm going to think when I get to the end, but I am just slowly making my way through it. I'm not rushing myself. I do have two other physical reads that I need to get to this month, so I need to have some type of urgency, but I'm not trying to like stress myself out by reading physical books. Uh, I did talk about Forget Me Not by Julie Soto yesterday. I didn't read any more yesterday, so I just want to let you know I'm still on page 148, and I don't know if I'm going to continue on with this because I do share my Libro FM cat account with a friend, and he's currently reading a book on there, and when you read them at the same time, even though they're diff different books, the audios kind of stop playing, um, kind of like Hoopla. If you listen to to the same account at the, on the same at the same time they stopped playing so i'm gonna let him finish what he's reading he's reading twisted love right now so i'm gonna put that off to the side not that i'm not enjoying it i really am but i want to give him the space since he started his book before i started mine so anyways besides the point okay yeah the seven years loop by ashley possum wow wow well i'm loving it i'm loving it i'm loving it and this is one of those books that i I feel immensely excited to say that I'm loving it because I did not plan on picking it up anytime soon. I don't read a lot of try, ro try romances and it's very rare that I pick one up and I'm like, oh my god. But this one, yes, yes, I am. I don't know if you can quite see. There's a tabs are like really light. Oh yeah, you can. I am tabbing and I am highlighting and I am writing it and I'm having a great time. Uh, I am, like I said, reading this for an in-person book club with my friend Hannah and I'm just so excited be reading this one and hopefully she's enjoying it hopefully i don't know if she already read it but hopefully she enjoyed it or is, is enjoying it because this is my pick but no i'm just having a great time i'm having a, um live laugh loving i'm literally just having the best time i texted karina because this is one of her favorites and i was like i love it and she was like yes so anyways i just want to like sit here and like stare at the book and then read it and then stare at it and then read it and stare at it but i don't know it's just something about the writing it's just beautiful there was a line in here that I wanted to share because I just like the exploration uh, the exploration of her writing like I feel like she just has a beautiful way of telling a story let's see if I can find it this is just like an exploration of her writing not necessarily the plot so this is not a spoiler but it's just so beautiful um it says he was disorienting in the kind of way kaleidoscopes were constantly moving and shifting full of colors and shapes that shouldn't have gone together but did in a way that made it perfect yes 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 so anyways i'm done gushing about that book i'm very excited i'm not going to be reading this one either um because i am tabbing and highlighting this so i don't want to miss out on any good lines while listening to the audiobook so i think i'm going to pick up something else i just don't know what i'm in the mood for but since you're here why don't i just like go through what's currently on my tbr for the month and let you guys know what i might pick up on my car ride and i'll make a final decision a little bit later on so we have Shadows of You by Catherine Cowles. I'm not up to that book in the series yet, so I have to wait on that one. Then we have Without Merit by Colleen Hoover. That one is on uh, Everand, but I don't know if I'm in the mood for that right now. Funny Feelings, I'm going to wait closer till the end of the month to pick that one up since it is the book club pick for this one readers. Glimmers of You, which is the next book in the Lost and Found series that I need to read, and I'm tempted, tempted to pick that one up. But my physical copy is coming soon, so I think I might wait for that. 
Fairies by Marissa Meyer is a high contender just because I want to get it done. I don't even want to look at it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to breathe my air with it. I just, I did not like that book when I first read it. So I'm not looking forward to that reread, but maybe if I just get that done and off my list, it's one less book to worry about and it's short. Um, and then I also have Not So Lucky, which is my series continuation spinner wheel for the month of April. And I don't own the audiobook of that one yet, but I could definitely, I could definitely pick it up. So I think my contenders right now are Glimmers of You by Katherine Cowles, Ferris by Marissa Meyer, and Not So Lucky by Tr Trelina Pucci. I don't know. Don't take me for Bible on that one, but I am curious to see what I'm going to pick up and if I'm going to enjoy it. So I'll check in with you guys when I have made a final decision and give you an update on my book. Okay, this is definitely an angle, but I'm just so lazy and I do not want to hold my own phone. So here you are balancing very precariously on my Stanley cup. So thank you for that. Welcome to my TED talk where I'm going to proceed to be upset about the books that I'm currently reading. Okay, thanks. Um, this is such a weird angle. What do I do? <laughs> oh, okay. This is better. I think you can see the top of my head. I don't know why you wanted to see that, but you can see it. Now. Reading updates. I talked to you this morning about the high highs. Let's talk about the lower lows. Uh, I did pick up and finish Ferris by Marissa Meyer during my drive to work. And while I was at work doing some data entry tasks, I was able to listen to a book. So that was good because I did not want to read it anymore. <laughs> it's, it was very short. It's only a five hour audiobook, but um, with sped up speed at 3.5, it was not long at all it was like an hour and a half and i zoomed right through it because the way i would not have picked it back up if it wasn't for the fact that i was reading it in one sitting i don't like that book i just don't i gave it two stars and i know two of my friends love that book and it's their favorite book in the series i can understand why people like it i just don't i don't have any interest in reading about a character that has literally zero redeeming qualities do i understand that queen lavana is the quote unquote bad guy the antagonist of the story absolutely and i get it i get it but i just she had zero redeeming qualities it wasn't like she was a super you know mean girl with a few redeeming qualities at the very beginning of her story but then the you know cruelty of her life turned her into an even harder person it was like she was cruel from the beginning and cruel to the very end and i know for a lot of people like that's an upsell that's a positive thing of the story for me it's not i just didn't care i didn't care about levana as a character and some of the things and the links that she went through to get what she wanted and to manipulate people around her just not my vibe it's not my vibe and i'm glad that it's other people's but it's not mine okay and then i was just gonna keep the train going of picking up books that i'm just not excited to read and that is without merit by colleen hooper which is very strange for me to say because when i was first starting my reading journey i was a big coho fan i just i don't know if my reading changes tastes <clears throat> what i don't think that was english i don't know if my reading tastes have changed quite a bit or if colleen hoover is just not for me or if i'm just not in the mood i don't really know but i don't want to read this and i i am in it i'm i'm currently reading it i'm three chapters into 19 it looks like um and it's a nine hour audiobook so i'm gonna be here for a good chunk of time i just i don't know i want to love it and i i still have plenty of opportunity to love it i just don't really know where the story is going i don't know what to expect from it and because i'm not overly excited for it it's like i don't want to sit around and wait for to figure it out I'm not gonna DNF it because I do want to see if I can get through another Colleen Hoover and love it as much as all the rest of her stuff but <clears throat> this one is also reading more YA which is not my favorite from Coho I prefer to read her adult stuff and yeah I don't know it's a weird story about this girl who has a twin sister and she collects trophies for all the bad things that happen in her life trophies that are not hers um <clears throat> and she has a very interesting home life her father is an atheist but he bought a church and that's where they live in this church that she refers to every part of the church as like the quadrants. Um, her mother 
who is the father's ex-wife, lives downstairs in the basement because she's, she's an agoraphobe, and her father cheated on her mother, who had cancer, with her mistress, but then married the mistress. Both of their names are Victoria. <sighs> her brother, <clears throat> whose name is very strange, I can't even remember it, um, is like very meticulous, doesn't like change. She has a twin sister, like I mentioned, we don't know anything about her. A four-year-old little brother who is fathered and parented by the father and the mistress. <clears throat> There's just a lot happening in these three chapters and I don't really know what to expect. Also, she went to an antique shop to buy a new trophy that's not hers um, because she was having a bad day, I guess. And she ran into a guy there and then the guy follows her out to the street and kisses her and she's like, heck yeah, I'm being kissed by this random stranger. And it turns out to be her twin sister's boyfriend. So I hope to God it's not a love triangle because I, I will throw the book across the room if it's a love triangle. I will yeet it from existence. So if it starts to lean into love triangle territory, it's going. And I think that that might be the case. So maybe I will DNF it. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just, I'm just going to truck along because I will not, I will not, I repeat, I will not let this book be the reason why I don't finish my TBR tarot. So that's my TED talk. Thank you for listening. I'm going to run to Amazon Fresh really quick to see if they have something that my grandma wanted for her birthday. I accidentally ordered the wrong thing, but I ordered this big massive box of it and of course I can't return it so I'm gonna go see if they have it and then I'm gonna order her another big box of it I don't know what I'm gonna do with 38 cans of v8 tomato juice don't ask me why she wants that I don't know but she's that's what she wants so I'm just doing it for her but now I gotta go find a Mott's tomato juice so anyways thank you for listening to this information that absolutely has nothing to do with anything I'll talk to you guys when I have another update on without merit either whether I'm ready to DNF it or I'm gonna push through so Bye. <laughs> Hi friends, let's talk book updates while I open up some packages. I have a package from Amazon. It's not the package I wanted today, but that's okay. Oh, it's also kind of banged up, so I'm hoping that it's still okay. And then I also have a fairy loot box to unbox with you guys, so I figured I'd do that while I talk about my reading updates, because I have a couple, <laughs> surprisingly enough. I didn't think I would have such a large update for you uh, at this point in the day, but I should let you know that I did finish without merit. <laughs> I started this today at like maybe 11, no 12, on my lunch, 12. I finished it. <laughs> so, I mean, it was fine. I gave it a 3.5. It's not like my new favorite Colleen Hoover. But somehow the end of the story, like the last half of it, really kept me engaged enough to want to finish it and see where the story was going to go. However, the first half was insufferable and it was so hard for me to get through. So that's why I couldn't get it, give it any more than a... Uh, 3.5 but I think overall the exploration of family and mental health in this was really well done I just don't think that any of the characters were super likable except for maybe one who was the um male love interest which is great because um I'd like to like him but other than that it wasn't really a romance either there was romance sprinkled in but it's definitely more of what Colleen Hoover does best and that is like women's fiction well in this case uh young adult fiction mixed in with a slight romantic aspect and it wasn't terrible it just wasn't a new favorite so I will definitely keep it in mind for Colleen Hoover's and I won't write her off entirely as an author but it just wasn't anything that I was like blown away by um, and then my next update is that I started a new book because I finished Without Merit and I wanted something to listen to on my way to and from work. So, I mean, from home from work, not to and from work, home from work. And so I started more, the More the Merrier series. Well, I didn't start it. I'm continuing the More the Merrier series with Not So Lucky by Trillina Pucci. And I am just a couple of chapters into it. It's only a seven hour audiobook, So at three, 0.2 times speed. It's not taking me too long and I'm enjoying it. I really like um, this author's writing. I think that she's very humorous and very funny and the smut is top tier so I'm excited to see what she's gonna do with the next book in the series. I did purchase some more blue light glasses because my other ones that I have are very very old and scratched to holy hell because I was really bad about keeping them uh, well traveled because I would travel with them to and from work but I did buy a set of three so I can keep a pair here and then take one to work and then have a backup. So I probably take one of the like less exciting pairs to work, maybe the clear ones. I think these are still cool, but not as, as exciting as the tortoiseshell ones. And I'll keep the tortoiseshell ones here and have a nice little pair so I can continue to do my editing and stuff on my computer and not get headaches. Cause I know that everyone says like, those blue light glasses don't work. 
they do for me. Uh, maybe it's placebo. I don't know, but I get really bad headaches and I work at a computer at work and then I come home and I work at a computer even more. So having these has been a lifesaver and they help me. If they don't help you, great, but they do help me. So that's amazing. This is a very, very thick, like, Luxur luxurious uh book sleeve but this is the fairly box it has one of those little pouches in the front for annotating supplies or bookmarks or whatever and then you have the inside which is very well lined and i don't think i've ever seen a book sleeve this thick before so gotta love it i don't know what it's inspired by but i'm thinking it's i was gonna say a tempest of tea and it is a tempest of tea so there's that then we have never fall in love with fate with the fate by stephanie garber this is um once upon a broken heart themed if it'll focus also, don't mind the uh, laundry. Ooh, that was loud. Don't mind the laundry in the back. I just uh, haven't had a chance to hang it up since all of our clothes go in Orion's room, and by the time we get around to it, it's bedtime, and he's asleep, and I don't want to bother him, so I haven't put that away. The next thing is this little pouch. It's another replica of some sort. I don't know what it's replica of, but another sword replica or an, an opener, letter opener. They love to give us those. It is a letter opener. I've never used one of these. So there's that. <laughs> then we have this, which is Legends and Lar Legend what? <laughs> Legends and Lattes Charms. Let's see. Oh, like um charms for is this for like what are these called? Croc charms? I don't like crocs, so absolutely not. But they are cute. Oh, there's three of them in here. Oh my god, that's cute. Is it a cinnamon bun? I feel like um a beauty guru showing you my cute little charms. It definitely works though. <laughs> Very cute. Okay. Then we have a soap dish. This thing is hefty. It's a hefty soap dish. Well, it's definitely a soap dish. It's inspired by Ray Bearer by Jordan Afeco. Will it focus? It will. It's pretty. Uh, I was thought maybe I would use it for something other than soap, but it's definitely built for soap so there's that and then we have the tarot cards at the bottom here the king of moons and the queen of moons gorgeous gorgeous i don't know what they're inspired by i would take a guess but i think i'll be wrong is it hotel magnifique maybe that's just a wild guess don't take his bible the uh art for this month's theme my nose is itchy <laughs> And the, oh, it's the Gilded Wolves is the tarot card. I was way off by Richani Chokshi. So there's that. I don't know what the book is this month. It does have some bright sprayed edges. It's pretty thin. Oh, it's a Tempest of Tea by House of Faisal. Well, I love that for me. I was going to buy a copy of this and then I didn't because Karina read it and she didn't love it. I do love this cover, although I will say I love, love, love the original cover so much that if I do end up loving this, I will end up buying a original copy because that cover is just stunning. But this one is also very, very pretty. Um, don't take that the wrong way. I think it's also very gorgeous, but it's just not that original cover, but very, very pretty. Different art on both sides, it looks like. Uh, I can't open that with my hands like that. I don't know why. Maybe it's the same art, if I'm being honest. No, it's not. It's different art. It is very pretty, though. And then the book is embossed on the front and on the back. So we'll see what I think of this one. It does have involved vampires. I do like a good vampire story. We'll see if I enjoy it more than Karina did. My nose really itches. <laughs> Tempest of Tea, Ray Bear, Legends and Lattes, Once Upon a Broken Heart. The letter opener is inspired by The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And the tarot cards is Rachani Chakshi's The Gilded Wolves. So that's all of my little updates. I really like these glasses. Let me know if you like these glasses. They're a different shape than my other blue light glasses, which I'll put them on later. And you guys tell me which shape you like better. But I think I like these. They're a little bit big on my eyes, but I don't mind them. It's not like I'm going out in them, but I think I like them and they will help me. So regardless of whether or not I like them, they were a cheap deal. I got three of them and I think I like them. I don't know. <laughs> but um, anyways. Did I tell you guys about the audiobook I started listening to? I did. This is just a, a mess. I'm so sorry. But um, once I finish that, then I will move on to one of the books in the Lost and Found series. Um, I'm just waiting for my physical copies to come in. They don't come until Friday. But I'm still reading... Forget me not. I always forget the title of that book. And then I'm also reading The Seven Year Slip. So I have other books that I need to focus on. But I'm reading The Seven Year Slip at home. And I'm waiting to pick up the audiobook for uh, Forget Me Not. So... Yeah, those are my plans for the rest of the week. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done on the weekend, but I feel like 
I'm doing okay. I've read four books already and it's only the third of the month, so I will take it. I, I, I think I'm winning. I'm winning. <laughs> That's really, really cool for you. Yeah, everything you do is cool. It's kind of unbelievable. It's all so unachievable. Yeah, almost inconceivable. I'll never do it like you do. And I. I feel like there's nowhere to put you that is absolutely 100% clean. I have laundry over here, I have my crap over here, but I do have an update and I'm sitting on the floor because I have a very exciting package and I am just so pumped about it. So let's first talk about my updates, my reading updates. Uh, I told you guys yesterday that I started Not So Lucky by Trilita Pucci. Uh, and I finished that one today. I really really enjoyed this one. I'm not surprised that I enjoyed it I read the first book in this series last year during the holidays and I loved it so much. They are very spicy They are very funny. They are pretty much like all spice no plot and I freaking had a great time with this um, I can't remember the names of the characters mm, Are you surprised? No, no, we're not but this one follows a football player and a girl that's in Vegas for I don't even know why she's in Vegas, but they end up getting like together with his two friends um, and they have like the night on the town with her best friend as well. So it's like a group of them all together. They're betting each other that one of the three guys is like more, um, I don't even know how to say it, like more fun during drunk night out, drunk, drunk nights out. Oh my God, I'm going to struggle with this. Um, and the male main character crew is like, I'm the best drunk um night out so let's get married and they end up getting married in Vegas and that's not really great for either one of them because no none of them really want to be married they want to get a divorce quickly so they end up going to a courthouse but the judge has a grudge against crew because he's leaving the Raiders for a different team and he's a huge Raiders fan he knows the uh, owner of the team and he ends up making it very hard for them to get a divorce um so they end up having to spend 30 days in Vegas they cannot leave the state and um they have to spend those 30 days together before they can ever get a divorce and it is the romance between the two of them i thought it was going to be a wide choose it wasn't so that's why i didn't give it a full five stars because i went in with the wrong expectations and i was a little disappointed by the fact that it wasn't a wide choose there was some polyamory kind of involved um it was but it was more like foursomes they were just having sexual relations with multiple people but like no other like relationships was happening between them so i don't know how you would particularly label that but it was not a wide shoes per se um but i did really enjoy it i had a lot of fun with it the humor was great everything about the like book itself was just a great freaking time and the audiobook was fantastic it's a full cast audio so if you enjoy full cast audios romance audios please check out these two books they're so much fun go in for a good fun time do not go in for like a plot and you know the, the drama don't do that but honestly it was just so fun and i'm so glad that i read it and teddy hamilton narrated one of the parts and y'all know i'm a huge teddy fan so i had a great time with that and then i also picked up another book on a whim because i've been reading so quickly and i'm trying to hit specific books during certain weeks of the month i decided to pick up a book that i had not planned on reading at all this month but then i saw that all of the other besties are reading it and i was like Hmm. So you see, I also must read it. And that is Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. I am very excited for this one. Um, I've been meaning to pick this one up for a while. It's been on my list for a long time. And I'm finally getting around to it. This one is like a cozy fantasy murder mystery on an island. Um, Emery and August were dating in high school, very much in love. There is a tragedy that happens on this island where a young girl is killed and August is the main suspect in the murder and he leaves for 14 years. And after 14 years, he comes back to town to bury his mother's ashes and all of the past gets drug, drug back up and their relationship is at the center. Uh, it's also is a fantasy, so there is a little bit of magic in here. And it's just like really cozy and atmospheric and whimsical 
right now and definitely a little bit dark too because the murder aspect but overall I'm having a great time the writing is really great and the atmosphere is fantastic I'm excited to see uh what I think of it as I continue I'm not even 100 pages in but so far I'm really enjoying it but let's put that aside because I could care less about books right now because I got myself a desk a little standing desk it's a portable standing desk it's on wheels so I can move it around if I so choose but I have been excited about this freaking desk for a week and it finally showed up. So I'm going to unbox it and build it. Hopefully it's not going to take actual brain cells to figure out how to build this. But anyways, I'm going to open it up and see if it's going to be hard. If not, I'll call in reinforcements because I don't care how it gets built. I just want it to get built. And then I'm going to like put it all together, make it all cute. And I'm just so excited. I've been like literally daydreaming about how I'm going to use this desk for a week. It's been keeping me up at night. I'm just... I'm so excited. Does anyone else get like that? They buy something and then they like spend the remainder of the time as they wait for it, thinking about all the ways that they can use it and how much of a great time they're going to have with it. And then you have a great time with it for like a week and then you never think about it again. <laughs> I'm hoping that's not going to be the case for this desk, but I am really excited for it. So I'm going to open this up and maybe do a time lapse if I'm able to do it myself. And then I'll show you everything when it's done. I wish I had the same delusion that I do when I was two and didn't think that I could ruin anything at all. I could never fall. I wish I had that same conviction, convinced I never needed a fixing. Yeah, that girl really knew her business. Where did she go? Yeah, she thought she could do anything, thought she could get anywhere. Confident she's number one. And if not, then everybody's wrong Used to be calm, now I can't remember How I used to do it, that I was a member Of Confidence Club, cause that don't last forever I wish I saw what she saw I wish I knew what she knew I love how she just stoned it But sadly I've outgrown it I know I'm still that girl But I don't know how to show it Like she knew she knew, she knew, she knew Wasn't really ready, no, I had to grow Up but it's so heavy and I'm feeling low Unlearning all that was wrong for me And I wish somebody would have issued a warning No, they did, but I kept ignoring I just wanted you to be aware that this book is currently breaking me So, that's wonderful oh, I didn't expect to cry <laughs> That's not what I expected from this book, literally at all, when I picked it up, but the tears are indeed flowing. <laughs> so, that is something. That's something. But if I don't know, it's gonna break me, oh. Yeah, she thought she could do anything, thought she could get anything. Just look at me, how my goals with nothing left Hollow, emptied out, but got lost, can't be found You stole every bit of me, now I can't remember morning friends happy saturday it's been a week it's been a week but i didn't really get a chance to talk to you a ton yesterday because i was scrambling i was scrambling <laughs> so much i did get some b-roll for you but no talking yesterday because i needed to read seven year the seven year slip by ashley poston and get it done before my meeting with my friends 
and I was scrambling. I got home at three, no, four o'clock. I had to leave by 5.15 and I still had 30 minutes left of the audiobook and I still had to give my son a bath and make his dinner. So like <laughs> it was a race to the finish, but I did finish it and I loved it. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. It is so, it's so good. It's so good. And it's one of those books that I'm so bummed that I wasn't more motivated to pick up because I would have read it so much sooner, but I'm glad that I read it in the time that I did because it was like the perfect book that I needed. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me feel all the feels. It was a very beautiful like outlook on life and falling in love and just Oh, everything about it was perfect perfection wonderful amazing um i don't even know if i ex really explained the synopsis of this but um this one follows a girl who i wanted to call her lemon clementine who um is living in her late aunt's apartment after her aunt has passed away six months prior and she's just finding her stride getting into this house and making it her own and one day she walks into her apartment and it slips seven years into the past and during that time there's a man that is subletting the apartment that knows her aunt and his name is Iwan and um, it is a relationship between the two of them but they are constantly battling learning more about each other because they are seven years in the past but Ewan doesn't know that and Clementine is trying to follow the rules that her grandma set about this apartment which is not to fall in love because you are seven years in the past and it just doesn't last and it is a relationship between the two of them and it was just so freaking beautiful the little clues and the serendipitous moments that were in this book were just top tier and everything about the way that this book was handled and written and talked about was just so freaking beautiful there are some trigger warnings in this so if you do have triggers i would say check it before reading the book however i don't want to say it because i don't want to spoil it i feel like learning that particular aspect about the book was um very impactful so i don't want to ruin that for you but if you do have triggers and you're at all concerned i would definitely check the triggers before picking it up but overall i really loved it it was so good it was so well written and i'm just so glad that i finally had the chance to pick it up and I'm very happy to say that Hannah uh, picked it up and loved it as well she loved it so much and I'm really really glad because I was nervous because it was my pick and I was afraid that she wouldn't like it so yeah anyways I did also pick up and finish Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young I finished it up this morning I had just a little bit left of the audiobook and I wanted to finish it up I liked this book I didn't love this book I think that the atmosphere of this book was done impeccably the audiobook was also really well done it was a full cast audio and it definitely felt well put together I just feel like I felt like the ending was a little unsatisfying and the atmosphere of the book took a little bit away from the actual storytelling of the, of the novel that left me feeling a little unsatisfied that being said i still really enjoyed it the murder mystery aspect of this story kept me on my toes for a good long while um and the way that things played out was definitely not what i was expecting it wasn't one of those books that was overly predictable which i'm really glad about because it definitely had notes that could have been predictable but then she took it and took a twist on it that made it feel new and different and very well plotted um the characters were definitely very nuanced and had a lot of dimension to them that made it feel very well written i just i don't know i felt I, I left the book feeling a little bit unsatisfied i don't know if that was because the ending just didn't really wrap up the way that i wanted it to or i didn't get all of the answers that i could have wanted or the um what is the word i'm looking for the justice that i wanted from the story and these characters but overall it was very well written it was very well done i really enjoyed the atmosphere i really enjoyed the like smaller fantasy aspects it wasn't like a, a full-on fantasy book and i feel like if you're just getting into fantasy this is definitely one to read it's definitely still has the cozy aspects even though it is a murder mystery and overall i just felt like it was really well written but it just wasn't like a brand new all-time favorite but i will definitely 100 percent still recommend it i'm gonna give it a four star it was really good and i'm excited to pick up more of adrian young's adult work in the future i do own some of her ya but they're in storage so eventually one of these days i'll pick that one up but i'm excited to move on with that author's adult work because i think that she bridged the gap between ya and adult really really well well i haven't read her ya but i feel like this felt like an adult book but it could have definitely been like YA as well I don't know something about the, the bridge between like the past and present timelines that happened in here that were definitely more on the YA spectrum but the adult aspects of it that were definitely adult just definitely felt like a good bridge between YA and adult readers so overall really enjoyed it had a great time with that and now I'm trying to figure out what I'm, what I'm gonna pick up next because I do have my kindle I got a fun little kindle stand so I will show you guys that in just a little bit but I have my kindle um so I do need to continue to read freestyle and orion's taking a nap so i might have a little bit of time to read on my kindle um or i could pick up something different i did also get two books in the mail yesterday so i think i'm going to show you those because 
I'm live, laugh, loving. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to fill out my bullet journal, but I just don't know what I want to read. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. I thought about maybe picking up Noble Prince by Debney Perry, but that's not on my TBR TBR, you know, my real TBR. So I'm wondering if I should pick up another book that's actually on there. And I did get Glimmers of You in the mail. So I might pick that one up because I am very excited to read that. So on top of my desk, I did add my little Kindle stand so you can see it. it it's going to not want to focus, but um, I did add my little Kindle stand. I have my little remote. It's like right here in this little black bag so I will take that out and use it a little bit it took me forever to figure out that I had this this little part on backwards you couldn't even see it this little part on backwards and I was trying to click it and I was like it doesn't worry I'm gonna have to return it no you're just stupid I was clicking it on the wrong side so I'm excited to get a chance to use this I've really been wanting a kindle stand for a while and I'm glad that I finally snagged one so there is that and then as for the two books that I picked up as I said I did get glimmers of you in the mail yesterday these ones are taking a little bit longer to ship I don't know why my other one is not supposed to arrive until sometime next Next week but I ordered them all on the same day and I got my other books on Wednesday so it's been a little while to get these but I'm not complaining because I'm glad that I have them but I just love these hardcovers because they have the people covers underneath the, the dust jackets and I'm just obsessed and I don't really know who this follows but I am very excited to get around to it I know that it's small town I know that it's romantic suspense and I'm very pumped for it there's a little bit of damage on this book but hopefully once I squeeze it in and it has the chance to lay flat it'll shape up a little bit but it just has like some gapping I wouldn't call it damage. I think it's just like maybe from the moisture because it's really cold out here right now. And then I also picked up House of Bane and Blood by Alex L. Menard. Uh, I picked this up because Nikki showed off the hardcover of this in one of her recent videos. I think it was her haul and I was like, I must have it. And then Karina put it on her TBR because she's buddy reading it with Nikki this month. And I was like, I'm just going to sneakily sneak myself into that buddy read and pick it up because first of all I need to stop buying books and then not reading them but also like if they're reading it I kind of want to know what the what the details are but the reason that I picked up the hardcover because it's absolutely stunning so this is underneath the dust jacket again gorgeous and it says spoiled little heiress it is stunning hardcover and then inside there's art and I'm a sucker for art so I don't know about you but that shit will pull me in every goddamn time. And I think that this was like fantasy romance Peaky Blinders, if I can remember from what Nikki has said. And I have never watched Peaky Blinders. I've seen episodes. I've seen bits and pieces here and there. My husband watched it quite a bit. And I really enjoyed what I watched. I love a good Thomas Shelby. I think that he is fine. So I'm not complaining about what I have watched. I just haven't watched a ton because I'm not a big TV watcher. But from what I could remember watching of the show, I really enjoyed it. It was very much a type of show that I would enjoy even though it's not my particular time period that I like to watch TV from. But I liked the storyline and the acting and the drama of it all. So um, I feel like this could be a good read for me. So I'm really excited about it i thought about maybe picking that one up but i just want to pick up some more books that are actually on my tbr so i can get that list down and so by the end of the month i'm not stressing to get things done so i'm gonna transfer my footage from this vlog over and get it in and then i'm gonna fill up my bullet journal and then i'm going to get some reading done i think i'm gonna pick up glimmers of you <laughs> just because i've been so excited to read it If you needed any motivation to pick up these seasonal Starbucks drinks, the lavender anything, this is your motivation. Do it. They're so good. This is the lavender chai with the lavender cold foam. It's delicious. It's one of my favorite things that I've tried from Starbucks in a really long time. If you haven't had it, I highly recommend it. It's so good. I went to Target because I needed something for my desk uh, to be able to plug it in. Nothing like decoration or anything. I got a mug because why not? I need another mug. And... I picked up a game for the house because I know the girls will really enjoy it. So I did that. I'm going to head back home. I'll tell you guys about my reading when I get home and I have a chance to do so. My grandma might come over later to hang out since my husband's at work. And I will chat with you guys with an update sometime soon, hopefully. <laughs>
we going? Good morning, besties. Um, happy Sunday, the last day of this vlog, and I'm excited to wrap up the end of this week and get started for plans for next week. But I did want to give you guys my updates, and I know that like this has now become my home base. This is my spot, the couch, <laughs> where my desk is, and so now I need to find a healthy medium a happy balance between car updates bed updates and couch updates because at this point it's been right here this whole time i think there's a little bit of variety but we will work on it we'll work on it but um i did want to give you an update on my reading isaac just left to go to the store he's going to pick up some yogurt because i'm really in the mood for a yogurt breakfast even though it's 11 o'clock in the morning <laughs> i haven't eaten yet i've had my coffee but no breakfast story of my life i am really gonna try this year to work on healthier habits and that includes eating healthier and working out and being more productive and waking up earlier all of those things but i feel like you have to start somewhere and i'm still at the starting stage <laughs> although i have been getting up early every day except for today i tried i set my alarm for six and i had to wake up the baby today so but the alarm went off at six o'clock and i said give me 30 more minutes just please 30 more minutes and i woke up at 6 30 but that's still early for for me because i used to be like the kind of person that would sleep until noon one um all that changes when you become a mom but even then like on my days off when i would sleep in I'd, i sleep until nine um so yeah it's just been nice to be a little bit more productive in the mornings and get work done i did do some more cleaning this morning with my husband around the house so that's good i just have a few more things that i want to tidy up before the start of the week i also need to go into orion's room and vacuum and clean up his toys and stuff and change out his bedding so i have lots of things i want to do none of that was pertaining to reading so but i'm also trying to be a little bit more open with my everyday life and not just do strictly reading content um so yeah this is just gonna be like a little bit of everything i don't know if you guys want to see that but that's what you're gonna get so <laughs> anyways let's get to the reading updates though glimmers of you by katherine cowles i read it i finished it i loved it <laughs> i loved it so 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 much like this was the story that i really wanted for the two of them and i feel like we definitely got it this one follows kaden and gray they were really good friends growing up and kaden unfortunately his sister passed of cancer when they were quite young and around the same time that his sister passed gray was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes however he was the one that ended up having to take her into the hospital because she had a really bad crash and it was really bad she was in a coma she they didn't know if she was going to wake up and he ever since then like put up these walls and was very distant from her because you know from the beginning like he just didn't want to get close to somebody that was eventually going to leave him and he was just so afraid of getting close to gray with the idea that she could at some point pass away from her um, disability and it was just it was a perfect build-up of their relationship they at the very beginning really hated each other because you know Caden had put up all these walls and gray really didn't understand how she had lost her friend so quickly it's like she closed her eyes one day and woke up the next day and she was not the same person that he'd always been and so when they were around each other in all of the books before this they had a really you know terrible experience with each other they were constantly bickering they were constantly fighting they were constantly pushing each other's buttons and they didn't necessarily hate each other i just think there was a lot of hurt there and um you just see the two of them really learn to be around each other it is a fake dating situation gray is being kind of harassed by this guy that she had dated for a few dates just like three dates but he just wasn't taking the hint he was just like no we're gonna make this work and she was like okay i, I need to figure out something else and Kem kaden happened to be walking by and she was like hey babe and he was like hey i mean okay so they ran with it but also um kaden's family is very rich he's a billionaire and they run the like resort in this small town and it's very large resort very fancy very uh like hoity-toity if you will and his dad has really high expectations of him and is constantly badgering him that he needs to settle down and get with somebody of status of stature and so the fake dating is beneficial in both aspects and they decide to fake date to get that guy off her back and to get his dad off his back and of course things turn into something a little bit more real and i just really loved the emotion in this book it is a romantic suspense story as well so there was some suspense aspects to it and overall i just love katherine kell's writing something about this series is very very special and i just really adore the characters these side characters that you have met in the other books that you know eventually get their own books but now they become side characters in this book are just top tier they are very protective they are very much like take care of your own i love a good small town rom romance because it always is like that the small town aspect is very strong and 
all they want to do is take care of the people that are around them but overall i just really enjoyed it the you know suspense aspect of it always kind of feels interesting because i feel like you can only do so many things in this small town to these people uh, one after another before it starts to feel like okay what else is going to come you know but overall i love the series i love the tone of the series i love the romance i love the characters i love the banter i love the wit i love the humor and i just love the way that these characters fall in love each of their stories feels so different and new and perfect for these characters and overall Catherine Cowles is just hitting it out of the park so I didn't give this one a full five stars I think that the ending wasn't my favorite um just because there's a lot of different ways this could have ended in regards to the relationship aspect and I feel like it does it's done in every single romance and I'm just a little tired of seeing it and so I was like oh good we're going to something that is not that and then it was that so it's fine, but the ending brought it down a little bit for me, so I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Still a very high rating, still one of my favorites in the series. Whispers of You still takes the cake so far for my favorite book in the series, but I just, I love the series and I love her writing. So, now I have to figure out what the heck I'm going to read, because I'm almost positive that all of the other books that were on my list of books to read this week, I have finished, except for Freestyle. Freestyle is the audio, I mean the ebook that I'm reading on my Kindle. Oh! And Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. I still need to finish that one up. And I think I only have an hour and a half of the audiobook left for that one. So I might try to finish that one up today and then pick something else up um, next week. I also need to figure out my plans for next week. Figure out what my weekly TBR is going to be. And get through a good chunk of my uh, TBR for next week as well. So I think next week I'm going to focus on Shadows of You by Catherine Cowles, the next book in the Lost and Found series, which is an, on my TBR tarot. I also want to pick up, oh, let's see, probably um, House of Bane and Blood, one that I showed you guys a few days ago. And all the other books that I have to read are either physical reads, so they're going to be a little bit harder for me to pick up, or they are books that I'm, I'm going to be reading for my TBR bingo video. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just film that next week because I was going to film it at the end of the week since I just put up my last TBR bingo vlog but I'm running out of books to read so I need to read those ones so that one those ones consist of Hawk, Foxglove, Blitz, and Cruel Seduction so I might pick up any of those for this next week as well so I think what I'm gonna do is sit down and write out my weekly TBR get that all situated and then if I have time if my son is still sleeping then I will probably sit down and read a little bit of freestyle um the ebook that i'm reading because i can listen to my audiobook later on in the night if i don't have as much energy but right now my energy levels are high so i want to give the ebook its best chance for me to get some stuff read so that is my update i'm gonna fill out my bullet journal for next week and i will check in with you guys later on tonight with my final updates and close out this vlog <laughs> I wish I had the same delusion that I do when I was two and didn't think that I could ruin anything at all. I could never fall. I wish I had that same conviction, convinced I never needed a fixing. Yeah, that girl really knew her business. Where did she go? Yeah, she thought she could do anything, thought she could get anywhere. Confident she's number one. And if nothing, everybody's wrong Used to be calm, now I can't remember How I used to do it, that I was a member Of confidence club, cause that don't last forever I wish I saw what she saw I wish I knew what she knew I love how she just owned it But sadly I've outgrown it I know I'm still that girl But I don't know how to show it Like she knew she knew, she knew, she knew Wasn't really ready, no, I had to grow Up but it's so heavy and I'm feeling low I'm learning all that was wrong for me And I wish somebody would have it, should have wanted No, they did, but I kept ignoring Didn't wanna have to face it But if I don't Hello friends, happy Monday. It is time for me to come and close out this vlog. It was a very, very, very successful reading week and I just had so much fun putting this vlog together. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. But I did want to come and sit down really quickly and share with you the books that I'm currently in the middle of, my progress on them, and then all the books I was able to finish in the first week of April. So without further ado, I'm guessing it's going to be kind of a lengthy update. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's talk about the three books that I'm currently in the middle of. We have House of Bane and Blood by Alexis L. 
Menard. Uh, I am really enjoying this one. I don't know exactly how far into it. The last time I updated my, my bookmark, I was on page 167, but I did read more on my way home from work today, and this is really good so far. Um, I wouldn't say it's my, like, new favorite fantasy romance, but I do like the fantastical aspects of this book. I really like the inspiration of, like, the Peaky Blinders type of situation in a fantasy landscape with an enemies to lovers um, romance at the center, and overall, I'm really enjoying it. It's a marriage of convenience. It has some interesting political political and um like gang and mafia ties that I am very intrigued by and overall I'm just curious to continue my read of this I don't know if it's going to be a brand new favorite but I'm curious to see what I'm going to think when I get to the end and whether or not I'll be compelled to pick up book two which is coming out very very soon I am also still in the middle of Forget Me Not by Julie Soto I wanted to finish this one up before the week was over but I got inspired by other books and just haven't picked this one back up yet but from what I can already say from this I really think it's going to be a book that I absolutely love. I have loved it so far. I am 150 pages into it and I'm obsessed with the writing and the characters and where the story is going and I'm just hoping that it continues in the second half of the book and I love it just as much but I'm hoping to finish this one up relatively soon. And the only other book that I don't own that I'm currently in the middle of is Freestyle. This is my Why Choose dance romance that I'm currently reading and so far so good. I have been picking it up very very slowly and on my own pace. I will need to start to step it into gear soon because I do have two other books that I need to read that are physical reads but right now I'm taking my time and enjoying it and just slowly making my way through. Hopefully I can get to that one soon and get at least over the halfway mark and um get further in and usually when I get to about the 70% mark of a book it's usually pretty easy for me to just like fly through it on my kindle because I'm so close to the end so that's my hope my prayer for that one but we shall see how soon I'm able to get it done and then let's go ahead and talk about the six books that I completed over this week so let's start with the one at the very very top and that is uh the seven year slip by Ashley Poston I love this book so much I gave it a five out of five stars it was amazing it was incredible it was everything that I could have wanted from this story I'm glad that I had a reason to pick this one up and I was definitely not disappointed by this read at all at in any way she perform. Thank you so much to Karina for raving about it so much that I just absolutely had to give it a go. So I'm excited that I read that one. I also picked up and read Without Merit by Colleen Hoover. It was okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It wasn't my favorite read. It's not my new favorite Colleen Hoover. I definitely won't write off Colleen Hoover as an author in, a, in her entirety, but I'm not looking forward to picking up any of her books right at this moment. Then I picked up and finished Glimmers of You by Catherine Cowles, the third book in a Lost and Found series, and I love this one. I love it so much. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The ending was not my favorite, but overall it was a fun, fast-paced, compelling, swoony, romantic story that I had such a good time with. Then on a whim, I picked up Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young, and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it 4 stars. It was an atmospheric, very well-plotted murder mystery fantasy that I had a good time with. Again, it's not going to be a brand new favorite but it's going to be a book that I definitely recommend quite often. And then the two books that I don't own that I finished was Not So Lucky by Trillia Pucci, the second book in the More the Merrier series. And again, I really loved that one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The only reason I didn't give it 5 was because it didn't fulfill my Why Choose dreams for the story as a whole, but overall I really enjoyed it. And then finally we have Ferris by Marissa Meyer and I give that one 2 stars. It was not my favorite read by any means, but I already knew that because it was a reread for me, so I'm not surprised there, but I'm just sad that I didn't love it more upon a reread, but I'm not surprised I didn't like it, so it is what it is. You win some, you lose some, but those are all the books that I was able to get through this week. Overall, it was a pretty decent stack of books, and honestly, I'm really glad. For my first week of April, I started it off with a bang, and I got quite a bit of reading done, so honestly, no complaints on my end. But that is the end of this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. If you made it to the end and you don't have anything else to comment, leave your favorite flower emoji for the beginning of spring. I love you all very much. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a big O thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.